Hello, Avanti, ma'am. I'm your host for today. My yes. name is Radhika Soni. <laughs> so, um, to introduce Avanti, ma'am, Avanti Nagral, a successful international singer, songwriter, and content creator, was the first in the world to pursue a huge a dual degree at both Harvard University and Berkeley College of Music. Her focus on coming of age empowerment pop is a huge inspiration to youngsters all over the world. Her initiatives to help the Gen Z gain exposure and make informed decisions becomes a beacon of hope for all the aspiring students who wish to study abroad and widen their horizons. Let us give her a warm welcome. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you. Also, please do not call me ma'am. I am just a couple years older than y'all and it feels very old. So just a month. <laughs> Hello, Avanti. Yes. <laughs> nice to meet you, Radhika. And thank you for the lovely introduction. Uh, so Avanti, ma'am, uh, or just, just Avanti. <laughs> uh, Avanti, uh, how has your journey been until now? Um, and what kind of questions people generally ask you, you know, some, uh, maybe some weird questions or maybe, you know, something that um, just irks you about the society. Oh, there's several things that irk me about society. Uh, if we start with that, that's a long list. But um, I guess from a personal perspective, a lot of people definitely ask me, they're like, Oh, so you went to Harvard, but you're doing music and content. And they use that as sort of like, they're not equivalent to one another. Um, and a lot of people, I think we associate education as a, or, you know, a college as, as a definitive stepping stone to something. Um, and it just shows what our viewpoint of jobs and careers are, right? When we think of jobs and careers, we think math if you studied math, you have to be a mathematician or you have to do something in banking or finance or something related to that, right? If you've studied, English, you don't have options, right? That's why we have the stigma against the arts. And um, to me, learning is at the core of everything that we do. And learning happens both inside and outside the classroom, regardless of what you end up studying. It's more about who you are as a person, how you're developing your own soft skills, hard skills, and how you're developing the way your brain thinks. You know, um, one of the things that I would highly recommend, um, and I know it's a hard concept, but I would suggest to a lot of students who are in college or just people in life not to think about what they want to do as a job or as um, as isn't even a career to be honest but think about a life you want to live and how do all the aspects of your life work toward that i know it sounds like oh this fantasy concept um but i promise when you think about what it what how what kind of life do you want to live for example there's a lot of people who love traveling right i mean obviously during covid it's not been as as much of an opportunity but let's say you love traveling how can you create a life for yourself that allows you to do the things that you love if you love traveling maybe doing something in consulting is great for you because you travel a lot for work you know maybe even being like a travel content creator is great for you um, maybe doing something that's completely remote, like your job is completely remote so that you can actually work from different parts of the world. Um, it's less about the thing that you do, because I think we associate the thing that we do with who we are. And those are two very separate things. It's one of the aspects of who we are, but who we are is so much bigger than that. Um, so yeah, sorry, that was a little launch into Gyan about jobs, which I didn't intend, but I hope. <laughs> uh that's that's actually really beautiful and i can relate to it i think all of us can relate to it um, <laughs> thank you for the gyan um you are a wonderful singer avanti uh, what is the one thing that has always motivated you towards singing uh a couple things one i grew up around it a lot when i so i was born in the us lived there till i was 9 and i used to do a lot of bhajans and devotional music um because my mom's pretty spiritual and my dad used to play the tabla so i was surrounded by you know you know so that was there for me at home with that kind of music then when i moved to india i trained in indian classical did um did anything musical in school possible like even i went to a christian high school so there was a lot of choir singing, church singing. And I found it surprising that I had moved to India and people were not singing in Hindi or they were not singing, you know, 
uh, Indian songs. So we created the very uncool Hindi choir in school, but it was very fun. We used to sing at, you know, all the Independence Day and Republic Day celebrations. But in any case, I got exposed to a lot of things. I did a lot of professional theater and um, I never considered it to be a profession or even something that was that large in my life until two things happened. One, when I was about 15, um, I, I've, I've grown up with a lot of health difficulties through my life. Uh, I was born with a heart condition. Um, I've had several major and minor issues. And, and when I was 15, I almost lost my eyesight uh, because of a brain virus. Basically, I woke up one day to study for a Hindi test, actually, of all things, and uh, I couldn't see. And at first I thought, you know, when you wake up in the morning, sometimes you're, you can't see properly. And I was like, oh, whatever, I just need to go back to sleep. But my eyeball had essentially like kind of come out of its socket and it was a very scary experience and I had to be rushed to the hospital. And it turns out that I had a brain virus that had, uh, I don't know how many of you studied biology till a certain part, but essentially you have a neuron and you have something around it called a myelin sheath. Or if you have a wire, you have a wire coating, right? That's what prevents you from getting a shock. Mm -hmm. Similarly, this sheath prevents you from, it allows for uh, faster transmission between synapses or, you know, essentially why we can function the way we can. And what this virus had done was it had removed a lot of this covering on a lot of my neurons. So I was not getting the same kind of synaptic electrical connection, if you will, to my eyes, and I couldn't see. Uh, and it was very scary. And, and what happened was because it was a brain virus, it affected my memory also. And this was right before my 10 standard boards, um, right before my prelims, actually. So you can imagine I was oh my God. <laughs> for many different reasons. And I remember coming home from the hospital and obsessively trying to do math, uh, but I couldn't. And I didn't remember history. I didn't remember English. Like I didn't remember anything. And the only thing that I remembered was music, if that makes sense. Wow. Um, and, and so for me, music had always been this healing tool uh, and it had been something that I was passionate about, but I didn't know what to do with it. And in that moment, I realized that music is so much more than just a song or a melody. It's, it's a medium that can be a vehicle to affect change. And so I became obsessed with the idea of combining music and the arts with change and impact. And, you know, and I particularly was interested in, in studying health and global health. Part of the reason was my own personal experiences, but it was something I gravitated toward. So that was, I would say, the main piece. And then the other piece uh, was when I was 17 turning 18, I took a gap year. Some of you may know that as a drop year. Um, essentially, I had gotten into college and uh, they, luckily colleges in the US, some of them are very flexible. I had the opportunity to play the lead role in this theater show. It was called Agnes of God. I was playing Agnes. Right. And Agnes was, yeah, and it was a yeah. You have won an award for that. That's yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, it was really, it was really fun, and you know, we, I got to learn a lot. I was, I just turned eighteen. My co-actors were fifty and seventy, and as you mentioned, we got nominated at the right. National Theater Awards. It was really fun, but what you may or may not know um, is about four days before opening night. So this show was amazing. I learned a lot. You know, it was the one time in my life where I was responsibility free. You know, when you're 17, unless, of course, your family needs help monetarily in other ways, you don't have the, you know, the zimidari and the majburi that you yeah. have when you're a little bit older. So I was like, let me do this now and see what, what life will bring. Four days before opening night, we were at the director's house and um, we get a call from this random number saying that somebody has filed an FIR against us oh. and wants to arrest all of us and imprison the director. So I thought that it was a prank call. You know, we were like, this is insane. Turns out it wasn't. Um, and so for the next few days, we spent time at lawyer's offices and police stations. And this guy had been able to take it to the home ministry. Um, so we were just like going crazy. And essentially, he wanted money or fame or power or all of the above. And so was using any excuse, you know, to, to try to stop us from putting on this play. It was the same year in which um, y'all must have been much younger, but they there was this uh, poet from Pakistan who was supposed to come into India for this national award thing, and he had been banned. Um, and there was a lot of like bans happening on you know art and expression. 
And we eventually ended up opening to, did we, so a lot of the Christian donor backed venues pulled out, which is a lot of them in India. And so it, there's this theater in Bombay. I don't know if any of you all uh, know of the theater, but it's called NCPA, the National Center for Performing Arts. Mm -hmm. um, so they agreed to do our opening night. And, you know, it's English theater in India, not that huge of an audience. We had 10x the capacity and the capacity of the theater was 1500 people show up because everybody had heard about this controversial play and we had 80 policemen in the audience who were making sure that no riots broke out wow. um, and it was this whole situation and the reason i shared this story is because the play itself was about miracles and it was about it touched a little bit upon mental health and child abuse and things that we need to talk more about and of course, it was through this other lens and somewhat religiously um, connected. But I realized this one thing, this English play that does not affect anybody's life has the power to make a statement, has the power to affect change. And that to me was the clinching deal where I was like, you know what? I love these two areas. I love health, global health, you know, all of these spaces. I love music and I love the arts, but I've realized that I can go about it in different ways and realizing that art in itself is so powerful. I knew that I wanted to be an artist then and there. And I said, you know, if, if, if I were one day ever lucky enough to have a platform, I know that that platform could affect so much change because art has the power to move people's hearts and their minds and their souls. You know, um, you may or may not listen to or read a paper or, you know, listen to a speech but you might listen to a song yes. and you watch a tv show um and that will subliminally change the way you think and the way you feel about something so yeah. sorry very long answer <laughs> to your short question. uh it, it's really beautiful you know because um art is so deep like a single song a single picture it can provide such a wonderful message to every sure. person in whatever situation they are like if one person is going through something, they will get, you know, an answer to that. And another person might get an answer to something else. <laughs> so um, would you describe yourself as a passionate person or a practical one? So, or is it like a balance between both? <laughs> it's always a war between both, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see this because it's my, hold on, let me, okay, you're, you're going to hear a sound right now. Um, you are on my computer, but can you see this? This yeah. is my um, computer cover. So it has yeah. <laughs> right brain thing, and then it has this uh, left brain. Left brain, yeah. Okay, but I am always at war between these two parts of myself. <laughs> um, does anybody else agree? Let me know in the, the comment, the chat box, if, if you are also similar. I mean, I think, I think it's important to have passion, and I think it's important to to be guided by emotion, because too often we're told practically so true, realistically so true. Um, but I think there is a balance where we need to be guided by both passion and purpose. You know, it is important to be practical in terms of execution, but we should not be practical in terms of our dreams. Mm -hmm. Dream as big as you can get. I think a lot of people are often limited by their dreams. They and I see this, I don't know if many of you agree, um, especially with young women. I remember when I was a teenager, my mom, and because again, I was interested in like health and maybe being a doctor or something in that realm. At that age, not just her, but so many women in my life would be like, thoda practically so true, like think of doing something where you can have a work-life balance, where you can, you know, balance a family and this and that. I'm like, I'm 14 years old. <laughs> I have no progeny. And you are telling me to limit my scope of my dreams because later on I'll have to think practically in life? I don't think so. I think that it's really important that we dream massive. All our dreams aren't going to come true, but the, if we don't... Actually, this is a good analogy. You see behind me, you have rainbow and clouds, right? If you don't dream big enough where your limit is always the sky, you're never going to know what's beyond that. Dream to space dream beyond that and at the very least you'll fall in the clouds right but if you limit if you yourself limit your dreams you never know what's possible so i think have massive vision have impractical passionate dreams 
And then in execution, you can find out ways to be practical, right? But but I think it's important to find that balance. Yeah, that works actually. Uh, thank you so much for that. Because I am looking for a balance in my life and uh, you know that is a really good way of putting it. <laughs> so, um, you know, I was so excited to meet you and uh, to be honest, I have not known much about you and I have done extensive research in the last few days and I have fallen in love with your songs, especially Permission. It is stuck in my head and uh, it's surreal that you are here and I wish I had one of those, um, you know, your YouTube, uh, you know, effects to you know, just put it up. <laughs> uh, but that's how much effect you have on all of us, how much of an impression you are leaving. So what is your, uh, you know, story? What is your secret to the success, you know, in the social media business? Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, big question. Um... I, I don't think I've reached a level of success yet, but of course, on the outside looking in, it, I'm very grateful for what, what has been created thus far. I think, and you're gonna hear this, you're gonna hear these words thrown around at you and no matter what field you're in, you have to be authentic and consistent. Um, but I will give you practical tips since we're talking about that, to, what that actually means. So when you're creating a personal brand, no matter what you're doing, right? And no matter what y'all do in life, you will have to create some extension of a brand for yourself or a brand for the product you're working with. Um, even if you're going into research, right? It's about how you present things. And I think that content, however you engage with it today, whether you create it or you consume it or whatever, it's only going to become more and more important as we go forward. So having an understanding of it is really important as a daily human being. That's just what I'll put out there. But when it comes to being authentic, right? What does that mean? It means how do you put a version of yourself or a version of your product or whatever out there in a way that connects with people but connects with you first? If you're always going to be chasing what the people want, then you're never going to know who you are. And it's first really, really important, no matter what we do in life, to find out who we are, not just who, but who, what, when, where, why, and how we are and what we care about in this world and move through the world with that. Because if you move through the world with intention, then you will find that everything else falls into place. You also have a choice, right? So as an artist, for example, you have a choice of being your own name or having what we call a stage name. So you may know of say Lady Gaga or Divine or Raja Kumari or whoever, they have chosen to have stage names so that they can have a different persona to the public and then they can have a different private persona. I knew that that would make me go crazy. So for me, it was important that I felt like I was an extension of myself online. Um, but it's important to have a balance between the person and the persona. Otherwise, they can get really, really mixed up. When it comes to being authentic, it's just, it is important to understand what trends are. And this is, again, in any industry, right? What's trending in your industry, whether you're in education or whatever it is. But it's equally important to create those trends yourself. If you're always following and you're not innovating, then you're never going to be in a in a space where people look to you as a thought leader, you know, um, and that's really, really important, especially with fields like content, which, to be very honest with you, have shelf lives, right? Um, you think of your favorite content creators, some of them may be younger, but if you know of people who are older, what, 10 years, max 15? Um, and then, as you know, many of them start other businesses or get into acting or do whatever, right? Um, because you always have to reinvent yourself no matter what industry you're in. So just just doing, being authentic to who you are, sharing what resonates with you, I think is really, really important. Um, I'll give you an example, right? I had so many people when I was starting out saying things like, oh, but you're, you're too vanilla. Like you're not hot gay enough, you know? Uh, <laughs> you're pretty edgy. I'm like, but this is who I am. And, and if, if people want to see me be edgy or want to see me in a certain way, that's great, but that's not gonna feel like who I am. And and I will find my people, right? I will find the people who I connect with and and vice versa, because there are people who feel, um, who feel like they want to be seen in a certain way, right? Or when you talk about certain things, uh, the number of people who've been like, oh, how, how can you talk about sex on the internet? How can you talk about mental health on the internet? How can you talk about all of these things? Sex, periods, mental health, 
masturbation, all these things are normal, right? And the more we relax like, sex, or the more we, you know, um, hide them, the more taboo they become. So the more open conversations, and I feel lucky because I come from a family, all my grandparents are doctors, highly educated, which is not the case for a lot of people, right? And so I've, I've grown up around that education, I've grown up around at least even if they don't have the same beliefs, they understand what it means to challenge beliefs because they've gone through school and they understand that. And I've grown up where it's normal to do that. But I know for so many people, it's not. For so many people, seeing somebody have a conversation with their like 90 year old daddy is, is revolutionary, which is crazy to me because that's a normal part of my life. But I recognized that for a lot of people, just seeing an example of something made a difference. So um, no matter what it is in your life that you do, and if you are interested in content or whatever, don't think that what you're doing is normal for you because it may not be normal for everybody. And even if it's normal for you, put a version of yourself out there that feels authentic to you. And then the other thing is just being consistent, right? Um, I mean, some people, Adele is an example of an artist who just shows up, releases something and then falls off the place of the planet and then shows up again. But not everybody can be like that. And the more and more our life is being con controlled by artificial intelligence and machine learning in every industry we're in, you'll recognize that the more consistent you are, the more the, the meta rewards you. And um, I don't mean that just in terms of content, I mean that with everything, right? Uh, so it's, it's all about trial and error and it's just finding your voice, if that makes sense. Right, that, that really makes a lot of sense. Um, and, you know, we will all try to follow your example and, uh, you know, making it passionate and practical and, you know, um, the tips that you have given us. Um, Ma'am, one last question for, from me. Uh, Avanti, sorry, I just... <laughs> uh, one last question from me and then we will open it up for the question and answers from all the other participants. Yeah. Um, how was it studying in the US and uh, is Howard all it's chalked up to be? Great question. Um, yes and no. The, the kind of talent that a place like Harvard attracts is amazing. Like you go there and you see your peers who have been doing amazing things. It's, it's, you don't, you can't believe that you're there and the architecture and stuff looks like Hogwarts. It's fancy and all that. So it feels different, but at the same time, you realize people are normal and that it's not, it's not the, the place itself, but it's the people who make up the place. Right. And I think that's true of anywhere. Which is why you can go to Harvard and also not do anything with your life because you feel like you've peaked and you have that brand name and that's about it. Or you can go there and, you know, really work on yourself and and it's really about the person that you are that's coming out of the institution rather than the institution itself. Um, also, like the food there sucks um, and uh, <laughs> living situations, not that great. So, you know, pros and cons, if anywhere <laughs> you go. Yeah, uh, you know, the living situation in Stanford is better is uh, what I've heard. I agree. <laughs> um, you think, I don't know where all you, y'all live in in, uh, in India or elsewhere, but um, if you think India has a rat problem, I had so many rats. <laughs> it was insane. Uh, so, you know, it's just, it's old architecture, old architecture, city living, you're gonna, yeah. you know, no matter where in the world you are. So you're not immune to it just because you go to a college like that. Right. Uh, so let us, uh, you know, ask the other participants what are your questions, just go on ahead, raise your hands. I see Arjun's raised his hand. Hi, Avanti. Uh, I'm Arjun, uh, the person who talked to you on Instagram. And uh, I have uh, many points for you to thank, uh, for me to thank you. First of all, uh, I've wrote it down so that I don't forget while I uh, talk to you. So sure. first is, uh, uh, please forward my thanks to Brinell. He was really cooperative of all my emails. And uh, like, uh, he, uh, like seeing his email structure, I learned many things. And uh -huh. thanks to you. She by the way, but I will thank her. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sorry. I'm really sorry. Okay. 
and uh, second uh, this is your video advice that i took to explore in college as i said in the message and join various cultural committees and i wasn't doing really great at the pr mm. we were uh, uh, like assigned to call sponsors get sponsorships and it's hell of a task i must say like getting up every day getting rejection mails i was talking to my hod's like i'm not able to do this i thought communication was something that i'm good at but no and suddenly you came to a rescue saying yeah uh, so i felt advised that and it all happened out of a blue so thank you so much now getting on to the question that i want to ask uh, as you are a singer and a music creator there's this is more passion uh, like passion driven like you singing is your passion but uh, what what is the other part of like production and more into finances wherein people who are not really interested into singing but are interested into the you know video making or working behind the scenes cuz that plays a very major role in whatever you do so what is like where how can we get into it or else what is the pathway of you getting into it that's a great question um yeah you see me the person but again there's a huge team behind that right and in my case it's it's still a smaller team if imagine like massive massive people they have sometimes hundreds of people working with them right um everything you have to consider it an industry it's not just when you see a song or when you see a singer or when you see a youtuber or whatever it is it's not just oh you woke up and you made a video that's part of it uh, or you woke up and you made a song but there's so much that goes into the back end and it intersects with so many other industries right so for example if we're taking music as an example music creation itself leads to something called intellectual property right so when you create a song you create something that has its own copyright and there's ownership to that copyright so you could you might have heard of the word label right like t series is a label for example um so either a label can own it and then they kind of pay the money and then they own your rights or you yourself like myself I'm an independent artist so I own my own copyrights and I am responsible for what we call exploiting them and that's the case with anything that's copyright related right so you create a video you create a film everything that you create anything and everything you write something you might have even scientifically have a patent it's a copyright and you can monetize any copyrighted material but it takes a long time to build out that over many years right so obviously you can imagine if you have something that has copyright you have to have lawyers you have to have business managers you have to have people who are also helping you exploit that which essentially means how do you get it to the most people so you might have publicists you might have publishers um anything and everything you can think of that applies to any other startup or any other industry you have all of those aspects in the creative world as well and it just depends on what you're interested in and how you want to take that forward right um you also might have multiple different for example uh we also say sell merch right which is a physical product we have to have a team who is responsible for producing sourcing selling writing you know there's all of the things that go into it um because i do music and content both there's different types of deals you have to strike with different things right you have brands reaching out to you to advertise with you the same way in which you know y'all have reached out to sponsors it's just and especially if you're involved with something like this in college you'll understand that all the functions that you have only get amplified in in the real industry world right um even in terms of there is the most bizarre jobs in the creative world right so you might have heard of uh, a sound engineer whose job it might be to record somebody or to mix and master which is you know you have multiple layers how do you make them sound the best but you also have somebody called like a foley engineer foley is the art of producing live sounds in a studio context so what that means is the next time you watch a film I want you to observe when somebody is walking through a scene or they are entering you will hear the door open the footsteps that's not being recorded by the mic um that's actually being added on later and there's somebody whose literal job it is to find these sounds to actually go out in nature and record these sounds so that you can mimic and match it to that right so there's like millions of jobs in this space it's crazy um sorry about that it's 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 actually quite amazing and no matter what you're interested in especially if you're interested in people and you know people facing communications facing things 
there's a lot of opportunities. Uh, I myself, you know, I'm also working on a couple of business ventures, which I cannot say much about now, but you will find out about soon. And and it allows you the the opportunity to, you know, it, it, when you create any brand, right? So today I'm working on creating Brand Avanti, but as a result, Brand Avanti can extend into many other physical things. And the credibility of my name can, as in the brand name, can also allow me to work in other spaces. Similarly, like Coca-Cola partners with somebody, right? It's the credibility of Coca-Cola that's been there for years. So I would suggest if you're anybody who's interested in the creative world in any way, think of any artist or creative or any creative industry as, as a startup as running, like, I think of myself and most artists should think of themselves this way. As a startup, you are the brand, the product and the entrepreneur, right? When people are consuming you, they are literally buying whether they physically spend money or not, you, which is a weird um, thing if you think about it, but you have to think of it in those terms because creative professions are not just, oh, you go sing or, oh, you go like, that's really, really important, but that's 50% of it, that's the craft. The other 50% is everything else. Thank you so much. That's with the question, I guess, and others can now pitch in. Of course. I think Hinal okay. has. Yes. Hinal Ghilani. You can go next. Hello, ma'am. Hi. No, ma'am. Avanti. Yes, hi. <laughs> ma'am, it is so wonderful to see you. Like, uh, you are an inspiration to all of us. And uh, my question to you was uh, that how do you deal with all the negativity, uh, like hate comments, failures, setbacks in uh, social media or uh, in life as general? Good question. Um, in these fields, as Arjun was mentioning earlier, you know, you wake up to a rejection email. We face so many more rejections than we do um, yeses, right? And and I think that that humbles you and it teaches you that not everything is going to go your way. Um, so that's one thing. But when it comes to hate comments, right? And when it comes to hate, uh, number one, a lot of hate often comes from a place of the haters insecurity or jealousy, right? And you'll see it in the way that they talk about things. So you have to know that most of the time it's a them problem, not a you problem. I know it's a hard distinction, but you have to think of it that way. Otherwise the cycle of hate continues. Someone hates on you, you hate them back. That's the other thing, which is you can hate the message, the situation, the comment, the whatever, but don't hate on the person because at the end of the day, we should respect each other's humanity. I like to just respond with kindness if I do respond um, because often it's coming from a person who feels probably lonely or jealous or insecure and that's the way they're trying to get attention or lashing out. Uh, sometimes I ignore um, and sometimes if it's really, really terrible, I uh, block. There is cool features where you can just block today. Um, and I do that less because of myself, um, even though sometimes it will affect you, uh, but more because I realize that as an extension of me or Avanti, the brand or whatever you want to call it, there is a community that we're building. And it's really important for me that our community remains a safe space. So I just, I have zero tolerance for, for certain things and that's just about it. And when it comes to like failures and setbacks in life, right? If you are at a low point right now, it can go lower, but it can't go that much lower. The only other way is up, right? If you just, even if you don't believe in whatever destiny or blah, 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 you might physics, you know, um, every action has an equal, equal and opposite reaction. And uh, when you move through life, you just have to know that if something is going wrong right now, it sucks, but there is always positivity that you can see in it. I'm not suggesting that you're toxically positive and you're like, oh, everything's okay. Feel the emotions, feel the hurt, but know that this is not the end. And it might be just life trying to teach you a lesson and making you stronger. So that's what I would say to that. Um, thank thank you so much. Okay. Uh, thank you. There, yeah, there is a question from Neil, he says, uh, my question to you, do you struggle sometimes to make music or do you find words or come to a dead end while composing or writing and thinking, maybe this was a bad idea. Do you on those sad days question your own creativity? 
all the time, <laughs> all the time. And I think this happens to a lot of us in a lot of different ways. There is such a thing as creative block where some days you just nothing comes and that's mm -hmm. okay. like anything else. It's a skill and it's a, it's a muscle that you have to exercise, right? So if you're not feeling creatively inspired right now, do something else to still feel productive and take your mind off of it. Because if you're constantly staring at a piece of paper or at your computer, it's not going to come to you, right? Um, I know a lot of people who wait for inspiration to strike, but inspiration can be anywhere. It can be outside. It can be in a conversation with a friend. It can be in a dream you had. It doesn't matter. Uh, but I think part of it is just you have to move through a lot of bad songs to find good ones, right? You have to move through a lot of bad whatever is to find good whatever. I'm not saying that happens to everybody. Some people get lucky. Like I do not apply that principle to my personal life, um, you know, but uh, it just it just depends, right? I, I'm sure many of you have had friends that were once friends and you're no longer friends with them. And it's just a part of life, right? You had to go through that experience and some of them may even be negative or toxic toward you to find the good ones and really understand what you appreciate. So it's very similar. But uh, creative block is a real thing. And if you are, I don't know, Neil, if you are personally interested in writing or you're asking this from a personal perspective, but um, on the days you feel creative block, just remember it's all about the practice. The more and more you do something, the better you'll get at it. And so if you're not able to write that day, that's fine. Maybe watch something, maybe you'll get inspired. Maybe cook something, maybe you'll get inspired. Find something that's like creative adjacent to still get the juices flowing, but you know that you're not obsessing over that one thing. Channeling the creativity in a different way. <laughs> okay, uh, Deepika, please go ahead. Um, hi, Avanti. I wasn't planning on coming here. I just came here for my friend, but I'm glad I did. You are uh, very fierce and I like your courage. So I had two questions for you. Uh, one of them was, I heard you talking about uh, dreams and passion, but sometimes what happened is how much ever effort you put in, it's just not enough. It's like uh, you're doing it, doing it very passionately, but it's just not enough. You don't get your big, big breakthrough or stuff like that. So in like you're good at it, but you're not actually going forward. It's just stagnant. So in such a case, like, is it me wasting my time or should I still go pursuing it or should I like people say uh, sky is not the limit keep working hard but those are like words big words although not impossible but still big words so in that case yeah is like am I wasting my time or something or should I still just go pursuing it no time spent on anything passion driven is time wasted. And also there's no such thing as wasting time. It's it's allocating time, in my opinion. Um, for example, let's say music did not work out for me or does not work out for me in the long term. Would I have wasted years? Mm, for some people, they might say so, but I absolutely do not agree because what have I learned? I've learned incredible skills. I have learned diligence. I have learned the ability to communicate with so many different people, work with different people in different spaces, right? I have learned how to be creative and apply that to whatever I want to. Uh, it's a very personal choice whether you move on from say, I don't know what your context is, but let's say there's some creative thing or something you're trying to do that's just not happening, right? Um, and maybe somebody's putting pressure on you to switch to another stream or move, try to another job or whatever it is. Uh, that's a very personal choice. I think when it comes to a situation like that, you have to assess the passion and the practicality, right? And the execution. Are you in a space right now where you need money right now? If that's the case, should you be doing something that at least gives you a baseline so that you can explore this as a side hustle and then see where it goes? Are you in a situation where that's not the case? Okay, how much time are you going to give yourself to see what this is? And also what does success mean to you? Right. For a lot of people in creative industries, success doesn't necessarily mean being a Beyonce. Right. As an artist, you don't have to be Beyonce to be successful. Are you making money from what you do? Do you love what you do and do you wake up every day really energized and charged? Do you have you branched out into other aspects? So let's say I'm just giving the music example because I don't know your context. So I'll just give my example. Right. I have a lot of friends who are artists who um, who teach 
who compose for, say, ads or things like that, which are extensions of what they do. Maybe their dream is to be the next Beyonce, but at least they are doing something that is part of what they always dream to do, just manifested in different ways. That's one thing. And also, again, we never know what jobs exist or what will exist in the next five years, right? Like being a content creator, 10 years ago, people have been like, you're out of your mind. What in the world does that mean? And today now so many people want to be content creators, right? So you never know uh, what that is. I, I I know that's not an exact answer, Deepika, being like, you should do it or you shouldn't do it, but it's a very personal choice. I think you just need to know what success means to you, right? And that will determine that. Does success mean money? Does success mean fame? Does success mean satisfaction? Uh, what does it mean? And then based on that marker, you can take that decision. Okay, thank you. And my second question to you is, uh, you studied abroad. So, uh, I mean, I want to go there for my master's degree, but now the only reason is because maybe uh, my talent will be appreciated more there than in this country. And second, it sounds very fancy to me because everything is like you're studying abroad. Ooh, nice. Wow, the people, you can explore yourself. So I want to explore myself, but alone because here I feel people pull down people. So so I'm sure it happens there also, but here uh, I know people. So uh, like apart from it being fancy, I'm sure it has many challenges and limitations that I don't know of. So if you could uh, elaborate more, a little more about those. Yeah. Great. I mean, one, it's expensive, right? That's a big challenge um, for a lot of people. And if you're able to get a scholarship or if you and your family are able to afford it, that's amazing. But it is something that you have to consider that it is expensive. The second is um, it can get lonely, right? Yeah, you know people here who might be judging you, but in a new place, you may not know anybody. And sometimes that loneliness really gets to you. And I don't mean the loneliness in terms of, let's say here you you feel like even if you know people, you don't have very many friends. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that's your situation. I'm just giving you an example. Uh, but in in India, for example, you almost never feel lonely because there's always someone around. Like if nobody else, there is a dudwala, you know? Um, and, and my point is like we exist in this interdependent community setup, which is not the case in a lot of parts of the world. And so it can get really lonely when you are the only one doing household tasks and having to manage what you're doing and whatever. Now, for a lot of people, that's not an issue, but for some people that is, right? I, these, those are just some of the drawbacks. Um, just like racism exists in India and sexism and casteism, it exists elsewhere as well. So that might be a potential uh, situation that, that you might know of. Um, and then, of course, in terms of uh, the other big issue for a lot of people is visas, right? If you are studying something, and if you want to work in that country, how long can you stay there? Do you get your visa? Do you not? So those are just a few of the challenges. But like you said, there's also many amazing parts of it you get to explore and learn with people who are from very different backgrounds than you. And I think that exposing yourself to people from different backgrounds than you is one of the best things you can do in life. You don't have, it doesn't have to be people from different countries. It can be even within India, right? When you're in college, you meet people from all over the country. You meet people from very different backgrounds than you. Um, and I think that no matter what you decide or where you go, just like seek out those friendships and seek out experiences where you are learning from people who are very different from you both at, at a peer level and also any kind of classes you take because it'll challenge your brain in a way that you never would have known otherwise. Absolutely. Uh, next, we have a question from Nudrat Sia. Okay. She says, you talked about how surviving in an industry is constantly about reinventing ourselves. As a female, it's a constant battle between maintaining the balance of constant reinvention and never changing our real selves because any move you make is criticized from a million of from millions of perspectives uh, how do you handle situations like these does it make you question yourself just like other artists and how do you get over it very uh deep uh question Nudrat. um yeah the eyes and lens is on female folks and especially female folks in the arts is even more i mean just an example is say Taylor Swift, right? The amount of times that woman has had to reinvent herself and then even in spite of that, uh, get criticized and pulled down and have to disappear. Whereas you look at a lot of her male peers, 
I mean, like I love Drake, man, but how many times has he had to reinvent himself? You know, um, Ed Sheeran, he's been the same like scruffy redhead dude for a decade. You know, not that not that there's anything wrong or better. I'm just saying that there is that expectation that you lose relevance. And a lot of it is unfortunately because societally we still perceive women as objects and vessels, right? And what I mean by that is we perceive them in relation to men. We perceive them as, oh, you've reached a certain age. Are you going to have kids? What's going on? And we ha ask all these like personal inquisitive questions that we would never ask a man. Um, and it's, it's just one of those things that needs to change fundamentally in society for it to have its effects elsewhere. But that being said, if you are a person who is has a platform or if you are in a position of power, um, what you say matters, what you do matters and how you share that matters. Right. So your question is, do I feel the pressure? Yes. But I also recognize that there is this constant pressure on so many people, whether or not they're in an industry. And, and if I succumb to that, I am falling back into that system that we've created as a society, right? Where my job solely functions as in relation to men, to please men and all of that. Um, so if I stay true to who I am and whatever, and, and you see this all the time, like the most ridiculous thing, I will be literally I don't know, sharing something on my story or whatever, something as small as that. And the number of DMs I get being like, the change your phone cover, I'm bored. Are mira phone? You know, and people get bored easily and you recognize that, which is why you're constantly, ex you can experiment without reinventing who you are. If it's comfortable for you, if you want to reinvent yourself, great. But I would push you to feel Rather than thinking of reinventing, think of growth. Do you feel like you're growing today? Do you feel like you're growing tomorrow? Personally, professionally, or otherwise? Then that's enough. And if that means that aspects of yourself change and are perceived as reinvention, great. But if not, it's okay. It's all about what you want to take with you and how you're kind of moving forward with that growth, you know? Makes sense, makes a lot of sense. And I hope Nidra agrees. And uh, next we have Siddhi. Go ahead. Hi, Avanti. Firstly, I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of yours. And uh, my question is that uh, you see a lot of teenagers and students are facing a lot of mental health issues these days. So what are your views on that? Because you've been a student and you've been an uh, Harvard and away from your parents and your country. So how difficult was it for you mentally? Like how challenging was it for you? How did you cope up with the things, like all the mental health issues, etc.? Definitely challenging, right? Like one of the things I mentioned earlier was a drawback being that it can be lonely. Um, and it is challenging. And and when it comes to our mental health, it doesn't have to be a disease or an illness or a diagnosed condition for it to affect us. If you have a situation that is such, you should seek help. But the same way in which I bruise myself and it hurts, it may not be something I need to go to the hospital for, or I cut myself, any small thing can affect us, right? And so I think it's about finding outlets. For me, music has always been an outlet, so I'm really grateful for that. Um, and wh whatever that is for somebody, it might be exercise or writing or anything creative or not, like watching leaves, playing video games. I don't know what it is, right? But for different people, finding that one outlet where you can just go to release your stress will help you at a daily level not have that buildup. The other thing is developing a support system around you, right? Especially when you're away from home. Um, it can be hard. And even if you have support systems, say your friends or your parents, if they're not in the same situation, then they may not understand. So really seeking that out, seeking out whether that's professional care or it's adults in your ecosystem or friends or people, just who you know you can rely on, right? And the third thing is definitely please, please, please always seek help. Um, help is always a step away. Um, if you all go to my Instagram page, you'll see a highlight that says mental health. And uh, we've shared a bunch of resources that are mostly affordable or free or you know easily accessible across counseling, um, mental health therapy and interventions, and essentially all sorts of gradients. 
Uh, we also um, have a Discord server. It's called the Avant Tribe, and we do regular mental health sessions with licensed professionals. If you ever want to share something live with somebody, um, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to like promote that or anything. I'm just trying to share that we have these resources available. So if you're interested, feel free to DM me also, and I can share. But I hope that was useful. <laughs> That was useful for sure. Um, you know, I'm thinking of joining that Discord server. So <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> uh, Sakina, go ahead. Okay. Sakina, could you turn on your video, please? Hello. I think maybe she's dealing with something. Yeah. Maybe we come back to her after. Yeah, maybe it's glitching. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next, we have a question from Ria. Ria says, what to do if we are passionate about something, but don't know where to go? How to take the first step? Who to look up to for guidance? And how did you keep yourself going? Good question. Um, I have a whole video on how to find your passion if because it's like 20 minutes long or something if you want to get a proper detailed explanation. But three quick tips. One, you are what you eat, both your body and your mind. So examine what it is that you consume. What are the TV shows you watch? What do you like to read? What content creators do you follow, et cetera, et cetera. And you might notice a pattern. There might be a reason you follow XYZ people or you consume XYZ things because there's aspects of it you either enjoy as a person or you enjoy, say, the aesthetic of something or you enjoy whatever. And maybe that's something you want to explore further. The second is a lot of knowing what you want to do is also knowing what you don't want to do. So trying a bunch of things out and realizing like, hey, this is not for me is really important. Right? Because you may, for example, conceptually think that you enjoy engineering, but you might want to try a quick class or a quick module or something. And if it's something that does not interest you, great. You can eliminate by process of elimination a bunch of things that are not interesting to you. The other thing is also talk to people um, in, your, in your life, right? whether it's your parents, your family, your friends, whoever, and ask them what they think it is that you enjoy. Not necessarily what you're good at, that's also important, but when is the time they find you most joyful in life? Uh, and you might, the answer might surprise you, right? You might, for example, think it's while you're playing basketball because you're really good at basketball, but may, they may actually think it's while you're doodling on your paper because that's when you're most joyful. You know, and some of those things, and then there's many other tools, but those few things are places to start um, and, and just observe patterns in your life. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, a fresh perspective. Yes. <laughs> Mansi, Mansi Morajkar. Go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Avanti. Um, so nice to see you here. And my question for you is that you obviously have been in Harvard University and it's like a really big institution. And, uh, you know, uh, while you are applying to Harvard, there are, you know, really less chances, you know, to get into Harvard. So, um, what did you have a plan B? Because, you know, it's quite debatable to have plan B or not to have plan B. So, did of you course. have such plan B? I mean, I was applying to many other universities, right? And when you apply to universities abroad, you, or anywhere, you ideally want to segment them into buckets. So one is like your aspirational colleges or your reach schools where pretty much nobody gets in, like a Harvard or Princeton or Yale or Stanford. Then you have what your target schools, um, which are places that based on your stats and based on the profiles of other students who've gone there, you might or might not get in, right? It's kind of, it, it could be likely that you get in or maybe not. For me, I, for example, some of those universities while I was applying were like a, a Tufts University or Wellesley, I don't know if y'all have heard of some of these, but essentially those were some of them. And then you have what we call safety schools, which is essentially you are likely above average of the profile of the student applying there. So your grades are much higher or, you know, you can kind of tell once you see that. So that might be a, a few larger schools um, and things like that, because then it within applying, if it's important to you to go abroad, you have 
uh, a list where if say, God forbid, it doesn't work out, you have options. But I would suggest all of the schools you apply to, if you're thinking of applying to colleges, should be ones that let's say you get into your safetyest of your safety school, you should still be happy going there. Don't just apply to places for the sake of it, right? Because there's always other options. You can stay in India um, and, you know, uh, save some money. Um, but beyond that, you can also explore other avenues, right? One of the beauty, beautiful aspects of going to college here um, in some streams, you don't really go to college, right? Or you don't really do work except the exams. But what that allows you to do is work on so many other things right? Explore so many other aspects of yourself. So there's always an opportunity. You could also always take a drop year and apply the next year. Like, I mean, there's multiple options. Um, I would say in terms of college specifically, have that tiered list and then know that you'll be okay with this is, I mean, again, I'm getting a lot of gown today, but the, uh, I took a negotiation class and one of the things that really stayed with me, I'm going to type it out here, is no matter what you're thinking of in life, you always have to have a BATNA. A BATNA stands for Best Alternative to Negotiated Agreement. What in the world does that mean? Let's say I'm negotiating with, uh, uh, I don't know, like I'm buying something, right? And um, they're charging me 100 rupees and I want to spend 50 rupees. One option is we end at 75 and we're chilling, right? But what's my alternative? Is my alternative that I have another store I can go to? If that's the case, then I will not settle until I get close to what I want. But if my alternative is this is the only store I can go to, I'm likely to settle higher, you know? So my point is in life, you have to always know what is my best alternative. If my best alternative is something else, then hey, this is not as high stakes. But if this is like the alternative and you really, really want it to work out, then you have to kind of give a little bit. Thank you so much. Of course. <laughs> uh, so we have our last question from Yashri. Yes. Please go ahead. Hello, Avanti. I find you really very, very sweet and you're such a positive person. Uh, so I would like to ask you, like, in future, like, not in future, like, when you were smaller, whenever you thought of going to abroad, uh, what all things did you think about, like, you'll be going abroad and what else, like, you'll be facing something like loneliness or you might face some mental health, how will you overcome things and how did you overcome things? Uh, good question. I mean, I think one of the things no matter what you're doing like if it's a new experience let's say going abroad is a new experience for you you have to do your research you have to be informed as to what is exists right so one way is the internet you can research and see other people's experiences maybe watch videos from people who've gone to those institutions second is talk to students who've already done that before right um and the third is just like read up on blogs read up on awareness so that's one aspect is just like be as informed and well researched as you can the second is there's always going to be something new that you have no idea until you go there yourself. So no matter how prepared you are, you're always going to be faced with something new. So it's it's more about developing resilience where you are okay with anything that comes at you, right? Um, let's say, for example, you know going abroad, uh, money is going to be an issue for you, right? Um, let's say even if you get a scholarship or whatever, that it's a little bit tight. Um, make plans to get a job while you're there. Make plans to get a non-campus job if you want to have extra money, right? If you think that making friends is going to be hard for you, um, before starting, try to see if you can at least, I mean, add people on Instagram or whatever it is and start talking to people online so you feel a little bit more comfortable when you go if you feel like you'll be overwhelmed with a lot of people there, right? If you think that doing laundry for yourself the first time, figuring out your own food, whatever is going to be overwhelming for you, practice that before you go. Do laundry a bunch of times, cook a little bit, you know, just like the more, I, I oh my God, I really sound like some Yanni sage today. I apologize for that. But uh, <laughs> there is, a, have any of you watched the film, The Incredibles? Yeah. So there's this character called Edna. If you haven't watched it, it's a really yes. animated film. And Edna has this one line where she says, luck favors the prepared. I absolutely love that line. And it's something I try to live by because look, external factors are out of our control. There's so many things in life that are out of our control. 
But what is in our control is our hard work and our preparation towards something. So if you prepare, if you do that, and at the right time, when an opportunity comes your way, you will have that ready. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. <laughs> Being prepared <laughs> makes all the difference. It does. It really does. Did you face any difficulties in making friends or did you feel lonely sometimes? How did you face it then? Yeah, I definitely felt lonely sometimes. Part of it was because uh, I was also doing, as, as Radhika mentioned at the beginning, a dual degree between Harvard and the Berkeley College of Music. So I was constantly between the two colleges. And um, I was also performing a lot while I was in college. So a lot of my weekends were taken up by that. So I didn't have the same social experience that a lot of people did. I also don't drink. Um, I like basically just drink bunny and got a bunny. So uh, as a result, you know, you do get excluded from certain social experiences, which is totally okay by me, to be honest. Um, but for some people, that's that feels sad, right? You just have to be really strong in your principles and character, whatever that means to you. I'm not saying that somebody who chooses to drink or not is nobody's morally any better. You just have to know what works for you and stick to that, and then move through it, right? And one tip, like in terms of especially making friends with anybody but especially with someone who's different from you rule of thumb in life which i always try to follow everyone baseline loves talking about themselves okay yeah. it makes you really happy when you talk about yourself i'm very happy right now <laughs> so if you can get another person to talk about themselves when they are with you they will associate that positive feeling with you so when you meet somebody for the first time ask them questions Make them feel comfortable. Don't wait for them to just ask you questions or expect that. I mean, it should be a conversational two-way street and you'll find your people accordingly. But the more you ask questions, the more A, the person feels more comfortable and gets to know you. Um, and B, they also just like, like talking about themselves. So they like that feeling and they associate that feeling with you, psychology, so yes. Right, and it works as a give and take, right? If you let them talk about themselves, they'll ask you about you. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Avanti. Today has been such a such a blessing. We have all learned so many things and we have thoroughly enjoyed this session with you. Uh, we hope you have enjoyed this just as much as we have. And we all love you. Oh, thank, <laughs> thank you so much. So much love to all of you. And please um, feel free to come say hi on any platform. And if you want, you can just mention, like if you're DMing me, just mention KJ Sumaya so I open it. <laughs> Um, and um, thank you all so, so much and for the incredible questions and just for taking out so much time. I mean, I, I really appreciate it and I hope you all have an amazing uh, rest of your year. I know we might be going into some form of lockdown or whatever it is, so stay safe and um, hopefully maybe next year we can do something like this in person. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so Avanti, if you don't mind, could you sing a bit little? Sure, <laughs> yeah, one last day good. yeah, and then after that, we will end this session. Okay, yeah. no more, no more disturbing <laughs> Avanti. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, sure. Does anybody have any requests? Uh, you can just type in the chat box if you do. Otherwise, I can pull up a few verses of permission, please. A few verses of permission. Sure, <laughs> I can do a few verses of permission. Uh, let's see. Let's pull that up. Whoops. Just trying to pull up a track so it feels nice. Um, but again, through the computer, we shall see. Just someone give me a thumbs up when you can hear the music. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Let's restart this. The tension is so strong. Oh, I want to go there. I can see it in your stare now. Yeah. Let's go to the first room. Show your daddy he touched you. Consent is real cool. We can speed it up a slow down. No more circles, no more go around. Give you the green light and say loud. If you want it, 
Just say you want me. Come and get my permission. Ooh, you don't gotta be so shy. Hi, hi, hi. It will mess up the rhythm. Hey, we be feeling too strong. And nobody's getting here to just ask and go receive. I'll ask you to if you're mine. Come on, get my permission. Ooh, you don't gotta be so shy. Hi, hi, hi. Tell me what's on your mind. Just a couple lines of permission. Um, Y'all have been really fun, so I actually don't mind spending, I have like five more minutes. Uh, <laughs> who may know this thing, uh, but I would love to do one with you. I think it'll be really fun. I love to do this thing at my show is called Song on the Spot, where we basically create a song together out of anything. Um, and so what I would need from you to start that off, we usually have musicians and a storyteller, but that's going to be hard in this context. So what I'd love is if somebody could share a popular English song so that I can just use the music for that as our backing track. So just type in the chat box any popular English song. Uh, I say English only because it's easier to find those karaoke tracks. So go ahead. Um, I'll wait for a couple to come in. And then uh, I will tell you what we are going to do. Someone is saying All Too Well by Taylor Swift. Ooh, okay. Let's see what that is. If I can find a good track. Okay, great. Um, now, as I let this YouTube ad finish playing, um, if y'all can please uh, share any word or phrase that you would like for me to use in this song. It can be anything. Trust me, anything. We've made songs about Parliji and uh, ladybugs and just like, the most random things ever. So go ahead and share any words you would like. Meanwhile, let me bring up this music. Maggie, kindness, India, different spaces, love it. Keep them coming. desire in our burning soul and we would like to be loved by people and written in books and we would like to see the magic that comes from being ice but kindness rolls the world and it is what so amazing when you see right if you're kind to someone you can put them to bed with good thoughts together and show them love attention don't let them wither because we are in this together and we'll say that passion rules our lives and passion is what gives us relief from strife and lets us stay in our dreams together forever 
hurt this way because friendship is what gives us hope and i know i want to scream that one day we can all be together and not behind a screen because we hold this moment forever and it's little kj sir because we're here with each other and we've all got our best you're all grown up today with these memories and i hope that when you go to sleep you see stars you see the moon and you see your dreams and your passion and the fire that ignites love and that you are satisfied with this song and our happy souls together up above if you're in the north currently you may feel cold but I hope that there's a fireplace in your home or at least in your soul. Thank you so much for having me here. It's felt like an afternoon of peace with a side of hot soup. Because that's my favorite food in the world. Thank you, KJ Sir. We love you. Appreciate it. That was really fun. Uh, <laughs> thank you for writing that with me. I uh, loved using your words and creating that together. Um, I hope that was fun for you. Thank you all again so, so much for having me. This is really, really lovely. And uh, please do come say hi and send me lots of love. Absolutely. So, so much, so much fun. And I can't believe you included all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Try my best. <laughs> so we have our uh, cultural committee coordinator, uh, okay. Gaurav sir. Would you like to say a few words? Uh, Radhika, I think sir had some technical issues, so I think he had to leave. Okay. Uh, but uh, I think he was very happy with the session. And thank you so much, Avanti, for being here. It is, it is such an honor and such a pleasure for us. No, my absolute pleasure. Thank you all so much for having me. And have a beautiful rest of your day. And hope I get to see some of you in person at some point soon. Absolutely. <laughs> Let us end the session on this happy note. Sounds good. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.